And we are following major, major breaking news out of the NBA. The Nets have fired head coach Steve Nash after two plus seasons there in Brooklyn. He was hired back in 2020. This was his first time as a head coach, did not have any coaching experience in the NBA. Went 94 and 67, but were swept in last year's playoff following a year of Kyrie Irving drama. A tumultuous season followed that with Kevin Durant demanding uh, that Steve Nash get fired. And this season, a two and five start resulting so far in la Steve Nash losing his job. Uh, Jacques Vaughn will now take over as interim head coach. Steve Nash issuing his own statement. Um, you can see it here. It, it is lengthy, but in part thanking the Nets, saying it was an amazing experience with many challenges that I am incredibly grateful for. It was a pleasure to work with the players, performance team, and front office every day. I'm especially grateful to my coaching staff and video room who are a talented group with so much character and professionalism. He goes on to thank the Brooklyn fans. Let's welcome NBA insider and writer Bill Ryder here. Bill, look, we heard Kevin Durant before the season began. He wanted Sean Marks gone. He wanted Steve Nash gone as well. He ended up staying there. Your initial reaction to Steve, Steve Nash gone after just seven games into the season? Yeah, Amanda, you said it, that Kevin Durant got what he wanted, as stars tend to do, and that when things go badly for whatever reason, there's a myriad of reasons things in Brooklyn have not gone to plan it's always going to be the head coach who is the person, fair or not, who pays that price. The betting markets had shifted in the last few days for Steve Nash to be by far the most likely guy to be the first NBA coach this year to lose his job. It's not a surprise. It's probably not incredibly fair, but it certainly reflects a Brooklyn Nets organization that's been nothing short of a disaster this season. Look, before he got hired as the Nets coach, Steve Nash is someone who is very beloved around the NBA from your what you know, what was going on behind the scenes with him as head coach? I mean, where was there that much headbutting between him and the players? What led up to this? Yeah, I mean, it, it, look, let's, let's go through all the – first of all, the losing is the primary thing. But why are they losing? Why are they underperforming? Well, Ben Simmons certainly has not worked out and is suddenly injured again, not able to play. Even when he's on the floor, he was a more of a punchline than he was a basketball player. We have talked about – a bunch, and certainly it's been covered, uh, Kyrie Irving and the off-field ugliness that's been a distraction for this team. And Amanda, I think you hit on the biggest component here, and there's several. Kevin Durant tried to get Steve Nash and the GM fired in the offseason. The fact that Joe Sy, the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, did not do that didn't mean there wasn't going to be pressure, ugliness, a bad locker room dynamic, dynamic, as sources have explained to me. I don't know if this was inevitable, but it was certainly very likely Steve Nash was never going to survive this season, even if things went okay. Because when your superstar doesn't want you there, and his best friend Kyrie Irving probably in connection doesn't want you there, it's hard to survive in the modern NBA as a coach. You throw in the fact that they're not winning basketball games, they don't look very impressive. I think you add all that up, and that's why Steve Nash is no longer the coach in Brooklyn. You have three very strong personalities here. You have a lot going on with each of these individual players, a lot going on the past year with all of these players, and then before that, adding James Harden to the mix. I mean, is there anybody that would have survived that? I, well, I'll say this. I don't think there's anyone that was likely to succeed in this environment, especially this season, Amanda. And I could be wrong, but my view before the season now and for the remainder of the season is that this Nets team is going to be wildly underperforming and underwhelming as they're currently constructed. I've never thought, Kyrie Irving, that the juice was worth the squeeze since that shot he hit against the Warriors several years ago in the finals. That's clearly more true today. Kevin Durant's outstanding, but he needs help around him. He is not much of a leader when things are going badly. And Ben Simmons has obviously been a misplaced bet by that front office. Now, could someone have survived their job? Yeah, I think if it's a Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving hand-picked head coach, someone who had their support, I don't think they'd be more successful. I do think they'd probably be a little more positioned politically to keep that job. Amanda, remember, if I could take you way back, when Steve Nash got hired, Kyrie Irving went on a podcast and said, we don't really have a head coach. That's far from an endorsement. I mean, Steve Nash, in my opinion, and talking to folks close to the situation, has been undermined at every step. And really every part of this Nets team has been undermined at every step by bad luck, by injuries, by their own on and off field activities, by decision making like bringing in Ben Simmons. So no, I, no, I don't think anyone would have succeeded. And I think few people who weren't selected by these two stars would have survived this job. So Jacques Vaughn taking over right now. Um, I'm going to get to the coaching search here in a minute. But going back to the players and Kevin Durant speaking out against Steve Nash, he is now gone. He also talked about Sean Marks. He is still there. Are we looking at potentially him losing his job as well? 
I think there's no doubt that Sean Marks is absolutely under, under massive pressure. It's hard to get into the brain, into the mind of a, of a billionaire NBA owner, but we know in sports that when a GM fires his hand-picked head coach, it's often because there's massive pressure and it's probably the right decision and there's a deflection that's at play here. And whether Steve Nash was technically fired or he stepped away, whatever the actual circumstances, yes, Sean Marks is under massive pressure. He's under massive fire. And I think more so than Steve Nash should be held to account because, and I think he's a great GM and an impressive guy, but Amanda, this was a Nets organization that had a young core several years ago that was overperforming, that was building a really impressive culture, and they traded all that away. I get it. We all get it. For Kevin Durant to bring in Kyrie Irving, eventually for James Harden, who became Ben Simmons, and that's clearly been an absolute mess. It's not like they had nothing to bid on for the future. It was Marks who made that bet. It's not paying off. I think he's certainly under a lot of pressure. Whether it was Harden or Simmons, we have never seen these big three work together there in Brooklyn. I mean, it feels like between the front office and the players and these individual players and all their personalities and off the court stuff that's going on. I don't know if these puzzle pieces are ever going to fit together. You have Jacques Vaughn taking over right now as interim head coach. What do they look for in their next head coach? Can you get a head coach to work with these three guys to make everything work? I mean, it really depends on your previous question. What is the long-term job security of Sean Marks? And if it is Sean Marks who's going to be here making the decisions, what is it that he envisions for the future of the team? Is Kyrie Irving a part of this team long-term? Is Kevin Durant, who's under contract obviously for several years but wanted to leave in the offseason, here long-term? I think it depends. If, if the answer is yes to one of those two questions, they want Kevin Durant there long-term, he's under contract. They want Kyrie Irving there longer. He, he's not going to be under contract, but they could certainly change that you go and you get a head coach, let's be frank, who's approved by Kevin Durant and or by Kyrie Irving, if there's a rebuild coming, if there's a reset coming, if there's some recalibration that doesn't involve one or both of those guys, then you probably cast a wider net and look for the head coach who you think's the guy. And I'll, I'll throw in someone who can manage a locker room is going to be important given what we've seen. And because Steve Nash didn't work out, someone with coaching experience or at least NBA assistant coaching experience, which Nash didn't have, probably going to be very valuable here as well. We could spend probably an hour, maybe all day, talking about the Nets and trying to figure out exactly how to make this team work or not. Let's talk about Steve Nash, though. As you mentioned, no head coaching experience, no coaching experience before taking this over here. What's the next step for him? Do you think we see him continue coaching? or he's like you know that 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 was good enough for me I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a bit of a break and, and I think you said at the start this is a guy who's a he's a beloved figure in the NBA he's incredibly well respected and I think it's that the comparison I'm going to make is an imperfect one because I'm going to compare him to Ty Lue Ty Lue obviously had assistant coaching experience at a high level but I don't think it was easy to make an evaluation of Ty Lue when he coached LeBron James because if it went well and it did in Cleveland Ty Lue was going to not get the credit LeBron got that's just the way it works and if it went badly Ty Lue would have gotten the blame I don't think we know, and I've asked a few GMs, it's been several weeks, maybe longer, their analysis of, of Steve Nash as a coach, and the answer was, it's kind of hard to tell. Don't know if they're running his offense, those are hard guys to manage, Kevin Durant doesn't really want him there. I think Nash will probably get the benefit of the doubt that whatever happened in Brooklyn didn't reflect his level of coaching ability, and he'll get another chance, because I don't think it's been easy to make a real evaluation on him, given the fact that this was Kevin Durant's show and Kyrie Irving's show, and really a, a three-ring circus that I'm sure was very hard to manage. Bill, at the beginning of the season, despite the odds for the Nets, they were quite high to go ahead and win the NBA championship. You said, no, 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 this is not going to happen. And sure enough, uh, we have seen what has happened thus far with the Nets. We'll talk to you very soon. Bill Ryder there. Uh, make sure to check him out on social media for all the very latest in the NBA. Taking a look at the Nets under Steve Nash there. Things just getting Worse for him by the season, not so much from 2020 to 2021, but two and five to start with a lot of issues both on and off the court for the Brooklyn Nets. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.